What's up, everyone, and welcome back for another round of NFL predictions. Went nine and seven, I believe, last week. Um, I got every game in the AFC right, and then almost every game outside of that wrong. Uh, I got both AFC and NFC games wrong. Um, I think I only got like one, two. No, I don't. Yeah, I think I only got three. What was it three out of seven right in the NFC? It was a pretty crazy week. A lot of upsets. Um, and a lot of interceptions for uh, many different quarterbacks, chiefly Ryan Fitzpatrick, but there were a lot of other pretty bad quarterback performances. And one of the most boring Sunday night matchups ever, um, and it was pretty bad to watch too. I only watched about two quarters of it, and then I watched the condensed version, and uh, it was not a very pretty game for the Cowboys to win. But I guess that's all that matters is that they did win. So, uh... There's a few teams on a bye this week, the Packers, the Cow or the Eagles, not the Cowboys. Um, I'm trying to see what the other teams are. Uh, it looks like that might be it, actually. It looks like it's just the... Unless I didn't... No, I picked all these games. Uh, yeah, just it, lo it looks like it's just the Eagles and the uh, Packers this week. So, uh, let's get into it. Um, we're going to... i got to open the Yahoo Sports app so I can... Uh, see the lines for this so all right let's get into it we'll start with the one o'clock games uh, i'm gonna go down the list so first off we got seattle or actually let's start with the thursday night game miami at cincinnati cincinnati's favored by seven i'm gonna take cincinnati in this one they probably should be zero and three i that game won against the jets they probably should have also lost um they deserve to win both games that they've actually lost and the win they don't even really have deserved. So really, I, there's a scenario where the Bengals should be 0-3 and the Dolphins will probably be favored in this game. I think the Bengals are a much more talented team. I, you know, game against the Dolphins anyway. I can only see the Dolphins playing well in this game, but the fact that they needed overtime to beat the Browns on such an emotional day for that city really shows a lot about the, the true talent level of the Dolphins. I'm going to take the Bengals in this game. Line 7, I think that... Uh, it's probably at least a 10-point game. All right, now we'll go down the list of 1 o'clock games. As you can see, my uh, my picks up there. I'm going to try and go in order of the actual picks on the screen instead of the order that they're listed on in the Yahoo Sports app because I noticed I did that last week and probably did it the week before as well. So uh, we got the Colts at the Jaguars, and this is a London game, Indianapolis is I actually didn't know that when I picked the game, but I'm still going to take Indianapolis. I think the Jaguars are a little bit worse than I even thought they would be this year. I thought they'd be roughly a 6-7 to seven win team, and I think it's another 4-12, 5-11, 3-13 and and year. I think Gus Bradley's out of there if he loses this game. Uh, it'll be like the Joe Philbin thing, was it last year or the year before, where uh, Joe Philbin was fired in London, or after the game in London. Uh, the Colts got back on track last week with a hard-fought win against the San Diego Chargers. And uh, I, that's kind of when they, they needed to get back on track. I think they're a pretty decent team. I don't think they're by any means great, and they're definitely not the best team in that division. But they're going to be a good enough team to sneak out 7-8 to eight wins this year. Um, definitely going to take the Colts in that one. The line in that game is Colts by 2.5. I say that that is not covered by Jacksonville. And moving on, the Titans and the Texans. This is a 1 o'clock game as well. Houston is favored by 5.5, and, and I think they're a much more talented team than the Titans. The Titans have been a surprisingly decent team this year. Uh, the only game that they really lost out of the two games that they played was the Vikings game when they had a lot of turnovers. They had a lot of turnovers last week, but it was still only a 7-point game, and they really had a couple of chances to possibly win the game, or tie the game up at least. I thought that that was a pretty close game, a closer game than it should have been, but they did play pretty sloppy in that game, and against the Texans' defense, even though without J.J. Watt, is still fantastic. Um, I, I'm definitely going to be taking the Texans in that one. Line's 5.5. I could see Tennessee covering. I'm going to take Houston, though, in this game to not have that happen. Uh, the Bills at the Patriots. New England's favored by 4.5. I'm not impressed by Buffalo's win over Arizona last week really at all i think arizona's having a rough go of things early on in the season uh, they did last year too they had a rough stretch at some point in the year 
And it's never good to really start bad, but I think that that was a fluky win. The Bills were mad about the Thursday night game because they really had an opportunity to win the game several times, even though it was really a shit show. Uh, and it was it, it's a, that was a typical Thursday night game. But, yeah, I'm really impressed with their win over the Cardinals. I don't really think it matters who the Patriots start at quarterback because the thing, the two things that the Bills are best at, running the football and passing it down the field, are pretty much the Patriots' strengths on defense. They are very good against the run with linebackers like Dante Hightower and Jimmy Collins, and they are they have a very good secondary. So I definitely think that uh, the Bills will be limited offensively in what they can do. Also, this game's in New England, and I'm not really ever going to pick against New England if it's in Foxborough. Uh, I just learned that it's not a good idea, and that's they're one of the best home teams consistently uh, over the last few years. So I'm going to be taking the Patriots in that game. The line is four and a half, and I definitely don't think Buffalo is going to be covering that. Baltimore hosting Oakland, and this is definitely a game that I could see going either way. I picked the Raiders because I don't think Baltimore is a very good team. They're probably the softest three and zero in the history of the NFL. They played one of the worst games I've ever seen in my entire life against the Bills week one. And I think, what, they beat the Browns in a comeback since then. And then last week's victory was also against a not very good team, if I recall. Uh, yeah, Jacksonville. They only won 19-17. to So they really haven't had a convincing win so far. They've played three relatively close games against three relatively not very good teams. So... They're very soft 3-0. Oakland had that big win against the Titans. Their defense finally looked like it was actually passable. I'm still waiting for the big game out of them where they finally put it all together. I think this could definitely be it, but we did see problems against deep passing in the first two weeks of the season, so it's definitely a storyline to watch. Baltimore's favored by 3.5. Uh, I don't know why they're favored by that much. I would really honestly put it as like a 1 or 2 point. A game, but I most of the time you get three points for being at home, uh, usually anyway. So I'm gonna be taking uh, Oakland in that one to win outright. And uh, now we're gonna move on to the uh, AFC NFC games. We'll cover the night games uh, after the um, after we go through the rest of the games. Browns at Redskins. The Redskins had a pretty Actually, kind of surprising win last week. I watched the first half of that game, and then I kind of tuned out. Um, I I missed a lot of the second halves of the early games. I was busy during that specific time, and then I never really went back to watch a lot of them. But they actually didn't look terrible against New York. They blown a couple. They, the first couple games of the year, I believe the first one was a blowout, but it didn't I recall correctly? Week two was a game that they kind of blew toward the end with a bad play from Kirk Cousins. So. Uh, yeah, with Dallas, it was a one-score game. So they've played in a couple close games so far. I don't think this is going to be a very close game. Now, there was a very interesting storyline with this game. It was going to be the return of RG3 to Washington, but unfortunately he was injured for the season. I liked what the Browns did offensively a lot last week with Terrell Pryor. Uh, he brings a new element of randomness to that offense. It kind of reminds me of the Wildcat when that was a effective strategy. And uh, I'm definitely interested to see how that pans out against the Redskins' defense because their defense is not very good. But Cleveland's defense is not very good either, and the Redskins have a lot of offensive weapons. So I'm going to be taking the Redskins in this game, uh, if I can find the line. They're favored by 7.5. Uh, I don't. I'm, this is a hard one to pick because I could see Cleveland making it a, a one-score game at the end just because the Redskins' defense is very rough. Be, but because of that half point, I'm going to stay away from it. Uh, I think that it's. I think that Washington holds at least eight. So Seahawks at the Jets. I've been saying this for a while. I think the Jets are going to win this game. The Seahawks beat the shit out of the 49ers last week, to say the least. But that's the 49ers. Their offensive line still isn't very good. There's, uh, I'd say, a pretty good chance that Travon Boykin starts this game, and I like Trevon Boykin at T TCU, but I, if I recall, he went in either the late rounds or not at all in the draft, and there's got to be a good reason that I'm not an NFL scout. Judging on his college play, that's not the worst thing in the world, but 
You know, I'm not an NFL scout. There's probably a reason that he fell in the draft that wasn't necessarily related to off-the-field concerns. Uh, it might have been. I don't know. But I'm going to be taking the Jets in this one. That's not really a homer pick. It's really just an obvious pick of, if you look at the defensive matchup, the Jets have arguably the best defensive line in the league against the worst, I will say, the worst offensive line in the league in the Seattle Seahawks. And either hobbled Russell Wilson or a rookie quarterback who's never started a game and went, I don't remember if he went in the draft at all or if he went in the late rounds. Now, there's potential for a repeat of last week with Ryan Fitzpatrick. I don't think it'll be as ridiculous because if you watch that game, and it's easy to say, oh, he threw six interceptions, how terrible. He really threw like three interceptions, and then they just told him to keep throwing it even after he had already been broken. So, like, three of those interceptions were avoidable, and I get that it was a close game. You have to keep him in there, but at the end, it was just they were at, he, they were asking for him to throw interceptions. The Jets coaching staff was. So, uh, I, there's a lot of potential for that because the Seahawks' defense is still very good, but I think this if this comes down to a defensive battle, I'm not going to say I would like to take the Jets' defense over the Seahawks' defense, but the matchup against the offensive lines uh, or would like the defensive line against the offensive lines, I think will make all of the difference in this game. I'm going to be taking the Jets in this one. They're at home. If they were in Seattle, I probably wouldn't take them, but just because that home home field does make a difference when you're playing Seattle. So anyway, moving on. Oh, and the line is one and a half. Obviously if I, I have the Jets winning, so they would uh, cover the line by winning. Broncos at Buccaneers. Let me see if I can find this one. Denver is favored by three. Uh, Tampa Bay kind of has looked like themselves again in the last two weeks. Horrendous defense. They made Case Keenum actually look like a competent quarterback, which is pretty impressive. They had one of the worst game-ending drives I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, I was waiting for this game to come back on. I live in the Tampa Bay area, so I could just watch it on TV. And was waiting, waiting, waiting for it to come back on so I didn't have to watch the stupid... Uh, Bears Cowboys pregame coverage waiting and waiting it was delayed it kept getting delayed finally comes back out Jeff Fisher has 10 or death Jeff Fisher has an hour to figure out what his big third and 10 play is going to be and it's ultimately a sideline Hail Mary heave down the field to I think I don't even remember who the hell it was. it was Brian Quick I think was the receiver down the field it was one of the worst third down plays I've ever seen and what, if they picked up a first down, they would have won the game, pretty much. But they gave it back to the Buccaneers, who decided it would be a good idea to not go out of bounds, not call proper timeouts, and then at the end of the game, decide to scramble out of the pocket when they, the, when they were out of time, so you couldn't throw a forward pass, when they were inside the 10. It was a poorly managed end of the game. It was one of the worst end of game clock management sequences I've ever seen in my entire life. And, you know, you're going to get that from when you have a, a new coach, rookie QB. Jameis Winston's look, or not really a rookie QB, but a young, uh, inexperienced QB. And Jameis Winston hasn't really looked that great. Other Outside of that week one, he's been pretty horrendous. He threw, what, four interceptions against Arizona? And he didn't very, look all that great for most of the game against the Rams. He kind of turned it on in the second half. But I'm going to be taking the Broncos in this game. I don't think that with a turnover-prone quarterback that the Buccaneers stand a chance. Their defense is also terrible, and Trevor Simeon is coming off the best game of his life. I, I think the Broncos are rolling right now. I think they move to 4-0. Lines 3, I don't even think this comes to a touchdown. So let's move on to Saints-Chargers. This one ought to be a pretty good match or a game for offense anyway. New Orleans defense looked terrible on the Monday night game. I got to watch part of it. Um, and then I watched the condensed version on game pass and their, their defense is bad. And there's really no other way to say it, it might be even worse than it was last year, which I didn't know was possible. San Diego doesn't have the strongest defense in the world. They've looked pretty solid recently. Like th their defense hasn't really looked bad. They haven't given up like 30 points and five touchdowns or, Anything that's going to make me blatantly sit there and say, wow, San Diego's defense is bad. But against a quarterback like Drew Brees, their defense isn't going to be stellar, to say the least. I think this is going to be a high-scoring game, probably in the 50s, 
maybe even the 60s, 70s. You never know. You never know with these two quarterbacks. Um, yeah, I'm going to take the Chargers, though. They are at home, which means nothing for the Chargers. They're favored by three and a half. I'm going to go against the grain with this one. I actually think it's going to be a three-point game. Uh, I think the Saints defense will do enough to keep it close. Maybe not the most, although they didn't look very good against the Falcons last night, which kind of concerns me a lot the other night by this point. But yeah, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take San Diego, but I'm gonna take New Orleans to cover, which is probably a stupid move, but I'm gonna do it anyway. We got the Panthers at the Falcons in an early game. This one, Carolina is favored by three. I think Carolina is gonna win. Uh, they looked bad against Minnesota. Really, no other way to say it. They had a ten nothing lead and just could not do anything after that. I think Minnesota's the best team in the NFC. I don't know if the Panthers necessarily lost that big because they played they played bad, but it was against another great team. And I already thought that the Panthers were going to take a pretty considerable step back this year anyway. Maybe not considerable and means they're not making the playoffs. I still think the Panthers are top two to three team in the NFC, but I thought they were going to maybe regress a little bit back down to earth maybe like a four five six seven loss team maybe not seven nine and seven maybe a little mean for the panthers but ten and six eleven and five twelve and four somewhere in that range and they've looked like a team like that so far they've had a couple bad bounces the game against the 49ers wasn't particularly convincing i don't really know what to make of this team yet but i definitely think they're going to beat the falcons uh, the falcons have played a little bit above their heads so far this year at least in the last couple games that they've won Lions of Bears and taking the Lions. I think Matt Stafford against that Bears defense is going to play more like week one Matt Stafford than week two. And I actually don't know if he played that bad the other day, but I know that his team was down for much of the game. So I imagine that he probably padded his passing stats considerably. I'm going to take a quick look at how uh, Stafford actually did in this game. 28 of 41. Yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, 112. Uh, quarterback rating or passer rating three touchdowns not the worst I think he's going to play a game like that rather than the game that he played against Tennessee uh, the Bears defense I thought was going to be a strength of the team but honestly they're one of the worst units in the NFL and they just keep losing players so I don't think the Bears are looking to win much this season and I think the Lions I, I think the Lions are a solid team I don't think they're great I don't think that they're a playoff team I think the Lions are solid, though. I think they can pull out seven, eight, maybe nine wins this year. Cardinals hosting the Rams. I wanted to take the Rams really bad, but there's a couple storylines to look at. One, the Rams actually lead the NFC West currently because they beat the Seahawks, so they have the tiebreaker, and they both have two and one records. The Cardinals, as bad as they played, would gain first place in the NFC West if they did win this game. So I think they have that to play for. I think the Rams are a little full of themselves right now. The Cardinals haven't looked the greatest so far this year, and they did lose to the Rams, I believe, in St. Louis last year. But I think that the Cardinals are a significantly better team than the Rams, and I think that the coaching staff is going to get that team back on track. And uh, we might see a new quarterback this week, if, or maybe not this week. Well, we might even see him this week. I don't, I don't know if Carson Palmer lasts much longer as their starter the way he's been playing, which is sad to say because he was arguably the second to third best quarterback in the league last year by performance but he's been terrible this year uh, i i'd honestly i don't know if i'd rather have him or ryan fitzpatrick so far this year at least fitzpatrick's had a good game i don't even know if carson palmer's had a good game so i'm uh, definitely gonna be taking the cardinals in this one though if uh, they lose there's gonna be a lot of ramifications but the rams are not a very good team and the fact that they played against tampa bay kind of threw everybody off their scent but at the same time I uh, don't really think that's great. I forgot. To, I believe I forgot to say the last couple lines. So uh, let me get back to that really quick. The Panthers line is. I lost where the game was. Uh, three. I think that the Panther. I think that the Panthers are the Atlanta's not going to cover that. The Lions Bears. The line is three. Detroit's favor. I could see Chicago covering that, but with some bullshit touchdown or. Detroit kind of plays half-ass most of the game, plays down to the competition, but I def I don't think they're going to cover that spread. Chicago is not very good, especially now without Jay Cutler. And I know Jay Cutler's gotten a lot of criticism, but given the pieces, he 
performed pretty well, actually, I'd say. Brian Hoyer's not the worst quarterback in the world, but just not sure. Uh, and the Cardinals, this is a late game. The line is 7.5 Cardinals. I'm actually going to take the Rams to cover that spread. I do think it's going to be a pretty close game. I, I think Arizona's going to eke it out, but I think it'll be a pretty close game. And uh, last non-primetime game we have is the Cowboys 49ers. Somehow Dallas is only favored by three in this game, which is the most astounding line that I've seen all year. I think this is going to be a, a, a bloodbath, and I don't think the 49ers are very good. I'm going to take the Cowboys in this game. I like Dak Prescott. He's looked pretty good so far. And, you know, usually I don't think that PFF is a reliable metric for the judging of play, but he's ranked, at, I believe, fourth at, in at, at, in terms of quarterback performance so far this year. He hasn't looked the greatest, but he's looked relatively good. For the position that they're putting him in and what they're asking him to do, Dak Prescott has looked like a solid NFL quarterback, and Blaine Gabbert has not. I, I don't know how Blaine Gabbert's even starting, but... I'm definitely going to be taking the Cowboys. I don't think there's a shot in hell that the 49ers cover in this game. We'll move on to the night games. First, we got the Chiefs at the Steelers. And this is one that I really struggled with for a bit. And the line on this is Pittsburgh favored by 5.5, which I think is way too high. I'm going to be taking the Chiefs to cover, but I'm taking the Steelers to win outright. Really bad performance last week. There's really nothing else to say in that regard. They should have... Maybe not killed the Eagles, but they should have at least beaten the Eagles. And the Eagles killed them. And it wasn't really even... There were no moral victories in that game. They just got killed. Like, they the flat out just got beat. They're, they did not win in any facet of the game at all. They weren't as good passing the ball. They weren't as good running the ball. They weren't as good defensively as the Eagles. They just weren't. The Eagles are the best team in that division, it seems. Like, ta even from talent, especially now that Carson Wentz is actually good uh, down to performance, the Eagles have been the best team so far. And I think the, the bye week might kill their momentum a little bit, but they've looked better than any team in that division, it seems, up to this point. So, uh, that's not excuse for the Steelers, though. They shouldn't have lost that game. There's no reason for them to lose giveaway, pretty much gimme games like that. NFC team... I believe weren't the I believe the Steelers were at home. I'm not 100% sure on that. They might have been on the road, but uh, non non-conference game. No, they were on the road, so that might have explained a little bit of it. But non-conference game, easy win to take and against a a team that's probably not too eager to win, I don't think. But I'm taking them to beat the Chiefs. The Chiefs tend to be inconsistent in the first part of the year. Um I'd like to also thank the Chiefs for winning me my daily fantasy matchup last week because they scored more points than the Chiefs defense scored more points than any other player that I had in my lineup and I believe I started them in one of my leagues um and I I won all of my fantasy matchups this week week in my like season long fantasies uh I have three leagues I went 3 and 0 and I had the Chiefs defense in at least one of them so uh Chiefs defense played well last week I think this will be a really big, good defensive game. Five and a half line is way too high. I'm going to take the Chiefs to cover, but I'm going to take Pitt to win in the end. And finally, we got for Monday night, the first good Monday night game all year. I said on the record last week, I probably wasn't going to watch Monday night uh, because there weren't going to be any good games all year. And I broke that promise immediately because I actually watched part of the Monday night game the other night. Uh, Sean McDonough is a terrible fit for the Monday night game, by the way. He... I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. But the game actually ended up being pretty terrible too. But this one I think actually might be pretty close. I said earlier I think the Vikings are the best team in the NFC, but the Giants have looked pretty good. And it's one of the biggest shocks of the year is that the NFC East is actually has four pretty solid teams, if not better. I think that all four of those teams could potentially win that division. And I think the there's a there's a pretty reasonable shot that the NFC East might actually have a wild card this year, which blows my mind because I thought that was going to be one of the worst divisions in the league. I did not think the Giants were going to be this good. Uh, that being said, I don't think that they're going to win this game against the Vikings. It might be close. The line's four and a half. Uh, I'm hesitant to take the points on that because that extra half point kind of scares me. I think Eli might cover at the end, but ultimately I'm going to take the Vikings to win outright. Uh, or well the, well, the Giants won't cover the spread. 
I think it'll be a seven-point game probably, but it'll be pretty interesting throughout. Sam Bradford's looked like a good quarterback. They took a big hit with Alex Boone being out. There, It's going to be interesting to see if pass protection kind of breaks down because of that. The Giants defensive line has looked really good so far this year, so that'll be an interesting matchup to watch. I think that both defenses are very good, or at least adequate. Uh, the Giants defense might not be very good, but they're pretty good now that they have actual defensive linemen playing for them. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to be taking that. So, that's going to do it for this round of NFL predictions. A little bit longer than previous episodes, but I had to go a little bit more in-depth. So, uh, you can see the updated standings that I think are going to be um, after this week four. So, yeah. Um, that's going to do it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And stay tuned for more NFL predictions in the coming weeks. We'll see how we do for week four.